Hola y bienvenidos a Coffee Break Spanish. This is lesson 42 in Coffee Break Spanish. And in this lesson, we're going to continue where we left off last time. We were looking at verbs, regular AR verbs in the present tense. And today we're going to be doing this in the context of daily routine and learning to see what time you do certain things at. So, I hope you enjoy this lesson. So we're going to begin by looking at what we did last time. Last week we were looking at verb conjugations, looking at all the different parts of a verb and being able to see I work, you work, he works, she works and so on. Today we're going to build on this and look at some other verbs, some of which follow the same patterns and others which follow slightly different patterns. Let's begin by running through trabajar again. Trabajar meaning cara? To work. To work, indeed. So, I work is? Trabajo. 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 Okay, and you work when you're talking directly to a friend? Trabajas. Trabajas. Muy bien. Now, what about he or she works? Trabaja. Trabaja. So we've got trabajo, trabajas, trabaja. What about if we were talking about we work? Trabajamos. Muy bien. Trabajamos. Trabajamos. We work. And then if in Spain you were talking to a group of people and saying you work. Trabajáis. Trabajáis. Yeah, that is the form that's used in Spain and some other parts of the Spanish-speaking world, but mostly in Spain. If you were talking to a group of people in uh, Latin America, what form would you use? Trabajan. That's it. It's the same form as you would use for they work. So trabajan can mean they work and also you plural work. Now, if you were thinking about the polite forms, there are two polite forms in the singular. You would say, usted trabaja. That's it, usted trabaja. And ustedes, the plural form, would be trabajan. Muy bien. Let's run through the whole verb together then, the six forms, and see if you can work out which part is which. So, trabajo. Trabajo. Trabajas. Trabajas. Trabaja. Trabaja. Trabajamos. Trabajamos. Trabajáis. Trabajáis. Trabajan. Trabajan. Muy bien, muy bien. Okay, today we're going to use the same form with another verb. Let's take the verb desayunar. Desayunar. Now, desayunar means to have breakfast, and you may remember this from when we had breakfast in La Terraza, on the terrace of the hotel, back in lesson 33 or 34. El desayuno is the noun, breakfast, and desayunar means to have breakfast, to, to breakfast, I suppose. So, let's conjugate desayunar now. I'll see the parts in English, and you see if you can come up with them in Spanish. So, to begin with... I have breakfast. Desayuno. Desayuno. Yeah, you might wonder, it can't be desayuno because that's the same as the noun, breakfast. But <laughs> in actual fact, it is. El desayuno, but desayuno means I have breakfast, I breakfast. And you have breakfast in the informal? Desayunas. Desayunas, exacto. And he or she, or indeed you, polite, have breakfast? Desayuna. Desayuna. Muy bien. Now, we have breakfast would be? Desayunamos. Desayunamos. Uh-huh. And you all have breakfast in the informal? Desayunais. Desayunais. Uh-huh. Desayunais. Try to get the ice. It's more an ice than an ace. Desayunáis. Desayunáis. Muy bien. 
and then they have breakfast. Desayunan. Desayunan. And good, because you got all the stress right in each one of those. Desayuno, desayunas, desayuna. Desayunamos, desayunáis, desayunan. Okay, so one thing that we've not covered a huge amount in Coffee Break Spanish is talking about time. Let's introduce a couple of time phrases just now so that we can talk a little about what we do in the day. So, for example, I could say, desayuno a las siete. Desayuno a las siete. Okay, so what time is las siete? Well, siete, seven, so seven o'clock. Yeah, seven o'clock. So, desayuno a las siete means... I have breakfast at seven o'clock. Exacto. So, a las siete, at seven o'clock, a las ocho, at eight o'clock. We've come across phrases like this in the past. If I want to say then, I have breakfast at seven o'clock, what would I say? Desayuno a las siete. Okay. Cara, I'm going to ask you, ¿a qué hora desayunas? Desayuno... A las ocho. ¿Desayunas a las ocho? Sí. Ok. Yo desayuno a las siete. Y yo desayuno a las ocho. Ok. Now, desayuno in itself means I have breakfast. In that last example, I said yo desayuno a las siete. I have breakfast at seven. I'm stressing I have breakfast at seven because there's going to be a comparison. Cara said, y yo desayuno a las ocho. So I have breakfast at seven and Cara said the equivalent of and I have breakfast at eight. So you can use the yo to emphasize I, but you don't need it. Desayuno means I have breakfast. Let's talk a little more about the kind of things that we do during the day. And we'll add in some times as well. You might hear us mention y media. So, for example, desayuno a las siete y media. What would that mean? Uh, half past seven. Yeah. Uh, breakfast at half past. Exacto. Desayuno a las siete y media. At half past seven, seven and a half. Now, if you're used to studying German or some other languages, note that siete y media means half past seven, okay? And if you do German, you'll understand why I'm saying that. If you don't do German, don't worry about it. Desayuno a las siete y media. Desayuno a las siete y media. Okay. If I say, salgo de la casa a las ocho, Salgo de la casa a las ocho. First of all, what time am I talking about? At eight o'clock. Yeah, at eight o'clock. A las ocho, at eight o'clock. Now this part, salgo de la casa. Do you recognize any words in there? Casa, does it not mean house? Yeah, casa means house. So, salgo de la casa, if you've had breakfast before you salgo de la casa. Any ideas? Leave the house? Yeah, exactly. Salgo literally means I go out. I go out of the house, so I leave the house. Salgo de la casa a las ocho. I go out of the house at eight o'clock. Muy bien. So, moving on. I could say, llego al trabajo a las nueve. Llego al trabajo a las nueve. Okay, in this case I'm talking about el trabajo. So, el trabajo is the noun. Work. Work, yeah. Llego comes from the verb llegar. And you may have come across it already in the word llegada at the airport, for example. Llegada or llegadas are arrivals in an airport. So, llego is... I arrive. Yeah, and you know it's I arrive because it ends in O. Llego, it forms the same pattern as the other words that we've already looked at. So, llego al trabajo a las nueve. Luego al trabajo a las nueve. Now watch, it's llego, double L there. Llego. 
Luego. And that's different from luego, which is in the phrase hasta luego. It's a different word. Hasta luego, luego. Luego. And llego. Llego. Okay, so it's a totally different sound, but it's very easy to confuse the two. Llego. Llego. I arrive. And luego. Luego. Which is more then or next when you're telling a story. Luego llegamos al trabajo or something like that. Llego al trabajo a las nueve. So let's go through my daily routine so far. Desayuno a las siete. Desayuno a las siete. Salgo de la casa a las ocho. Salgo de la casa a las ocho. Llego al trabajo a las nueve. Llego al trabajo a las nueve. Muy bien. Cara, ¿a qué hora desayunas? Desayuno a las ocho. ¿Y a qué hora sales de la casa? Salgo de la, de la casa a las ocho y media. Muy bien. ¿Y a qué hora llegas a la universidad? Llego a la universidad a las nueve y media. Muy bien. Excelente. Ok, let's, let's continue. And let's talk about uh, having lunch. Having lunch, to have lunch is comer. So I would say, como. Como. Como means I eat. So, como a la una. Como a la una. Now, como a la una would mean... I eat lunch at one o'clock. Exactly. Now notice it's a la una. It's not a las una, because let's face it, there's only one hour at one o'clock. A las dos, a las tres, a las cuatro, but a la una. A la una. A la una. Como a la una. Como a la una. Perfecto. Como a la una. Cara, ¿a qué hora comes? Como a la una también. Muy bien, excelente. Ok, y dime una cosa. ¿A qué hora vuelves a casa? Now, there's something that's slightly different. Vuelves a casa. We're talking about what again? La casa. The house. The house. So, ¿a qué hora vuelves a casa? Any ideas as to what that might mean? What time do you get back to the house? Yeah. What time do you get home at? ¿A qué hora? Vuelves a casa. Vuelves comes from the verb volver. And volver means to return. So what time do you return home? It's quite a tricky word to say. Vuelves. Vuelves. And vuelves is you return. And I return would be... Vuelvo. Vuelvo, exactly. Try not to make the v sound in there too. B. Try not to make it vuelvo which sounds a little strange. Obviously, this is slightly different depending on where you are in the Spanish-speaking world, but if you can approximate it to something like vuelvo, quite a soft v sound, vuelvo, vuelvo, vuelvo a casa a las cinco. Vuelvo a casa a las cinco. Now, do you remember earlier in this lesson I mentioned a word that it sounded quite like llego, but it was a word that you would use when telling a story, and it would mean then or next. Luego. Luego, exactly. So after getting back from the, the office or from university or wherever, you could say luego and give the next part of your story. And this next part of your story is going to be descanso. Descanso. Now, descanso is linked to the word cansado or cansada. What does that word mean? Tired? Yeah. So descanso means sort of to detire, to become less tired. It means to have a rest. I rest. And of course we all rest in the evening. <laughs> so vuelvo a casa y luego descanso. Can you try repeating that please? Vuelvo a casa 
Luego, descanso. Muy bien. Vuelvo a casa y luego descanso. And then the last part of our day that we're going to talk about at the moment is ceno. Ceno, from the verb cenar, meaning... To have dinner? Yes, exactly. Cenar means to have dinner and comer means to have lunch. Although the verb comer can also be used generally to eat. So to eat something is comer algo. But when you're talking about meals, comer, to have lunch, cenar, to have dinner, to dine. So ceno a las ocho. Ceno a las ocho. Okay. What we're going to do now is go through the whole day and then I'll ask Cara some questions about when she does all these things. So I'll tell you my day first and you can see if you can work out what all of this means. And rather than stop after each sentence, I'm going to just do one long paragraph here and see how much you understand. Here goes. Desayuno a las siete y media. Salgo de la casa a las ocho y llego al trabajo a las ocho y media, más o menos. Como a la una y vuelvo a casa a las cinco y media. Luego descanso y ceno a las ocho. Ok, have a listen again to this. Desayuno a las siete y media. Salgo de la casa a las ocho y llego al trabajo a las ocho y media, más o menos. Como a la una y vuelvo a casa a las cinco y media. Luego descanso y ceno a las ocho. So, I said, desayuno a las siete y media. Cara, what does that mean? I have breakfast at half past seven. Muy bien. Salgo a las ocho. I leave the house at eight o'clock. Llego al trabajo a las ocho y media, más o menos. I arrive at work at about half past eight. Yeah, más o menos means more or less. So it's a useful phrase, especially when you're talking about time. Another way of saying that would be a eso de las ocho y media. A eso de las ocho y media. A eso de las ocho y media. Around about half past eight. Muy bien. I then said, como a la una? I have lunch at one o'clock. Y vuelvo a casa a las cinco y media. And I get back home at half past five. Luego descanso. Then I rest. Y ceno a las ocho. And I have dinner at eight o'clock. Okay, now Cara, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'm going to ask you questions and you're going to tell me the times that you do these things. And if you want to include a más o menos or something like that, here and there, that would be good. ¿Vale? Okay. Vale. Okay, entonces, ¿a qué hora desayunas? Desayuno a las ocho. ¿A qué hora sales de la casa? Salgo de la casa a las ocho y media. Muy bien. ¿Y a qué hora llegas a la universidad? Llego a la universidad a las nueve y media. Ok. Cara, ¿a qué hora comes? Como a la una. Muy bien. ¿Y vuelves a casa a qué hora? Vuelvo a casa a las cinco y media. Más o menos. ¿Y luego? Luego descanso. Or could you say descanso un poco? You could indeed, yeah. Descanso un poco. Luego descanso un poco. ¿Y a qué hora cenas? Ceno a las siete. Perfecto. Now, one thing, ceno, of course, in Latin America would be seno. Seno a las siete. Seno a las siete. Exacto. And all the other words that we've learned today really are pronounced pretty much the same uh, across the Spanish-speaking world. Now, some of you may have noticed in there some interesting things about the questions that I was asking Cara. I said things like, ¿A qué hora 
desayunas? ¿A qué hora llegas al trabajo? And a qué hora cenas, for example. But there were a few questions that didn't end in as. For example, a qué hora sales de la casa? A qué hora comes? A qué hora vuelves? We're not going to go into these just now, but just be aware that it's not always the as form that you use for tú. So in this situation, it's sales, vuelves, comes, and we'll cover that more in a future podcast. And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break Spanish. Thanks for joining us, and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break Spanish community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakspanish and follow at Learn Spanish on Twitter. Muchas gracias y hasta pronto. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.